Thank you, Your Honours. This is case number IT0481T, the prosecutor versus Montreal Perisic. Thank you, Your Honours. Thank you so much. Could we have appearances for the day, starting with the prosecution, please? Good morning, Your Honours. Carmela Javier, Rafael La Cruz, Rona McKenna, April Carter, and Dan Saxon for the prosecution. Thank you very much, Mr. Des Mr. Saxon. And for the defense. Good morning, Your Honors. Good morning to everybody in the courtroom. Mr. Perisic uh, is represented today, as was the case during the trial, by Novak Lukic and Mr. Guy uh, Smith uh, as counsel. And together with us, we have Boris Zarko, Chet Mayer, Tina Dralitz, and uh, Deidre Montgomery. Thank you very much, Mr. Lukic. The trial chamber will now deliver its judgment in the case of Prosecutor versus Monchilo Perisic. For the purposes of this hearing, the chamber will briefly summarize its findings. I stress that this is a summary only. The authoritative account of the chamber's findings can be found in the written judgment, <coughs> which will be made available at the end of this session. The trial has lasted nearly three years. The trial chamber had over a hundred witnesses and 3,794 exhibits are part of the trial record. Mamchilo Perisic is a retired general of the Yugoslav army. On the 26th of August 1993, he was appointed chief of the general staff of the Yugoslav army a position he held until the 24th of November 1998. During that time, General Perisic was the top military officer of the Yugos Yugoslav army, headquartered in Belgrade, Serbia. <coughs> Under Article 7.1 <coughs> of the statute, General Perisic is charged with aiding and abetting war crimes and crimes against humanity perpetrated in Sarajevo and Srebrenica in Bosnia between 1993 and 1995 by the Army of Republika Srpska, known as the VRS. The prosecution alleges that the VRS conducted a campaign of shelling and sniping against Sarajevo civilians throughout the Bosnian war. It submits that General Perisic, as chief of the Yugoslav army, knowingly aided and abetted the crimes of murder, inhumane acts, and attacks on civilians in Sarajevo by providing substantial assistance to the VRS. That assistance allegedly included considerable quantities of weaponry, as well as the provision of salaries and other benefits to the top officers of the VRS, including General Radko Mladic, the VRS commander. Further, the prosecution alleges that by providing logistical and personnel assistance, General Perisic aided and abetted the crimes of murder, inhumane acts, persecutions, and extermination perpetrated by the VRS during its takeover of Srebrenica in 1995. In addition to aiding and abetting, General Perisic is charged under Article 7.3 of the statute with having failed to prevent crimes perpetrated by his subordinates and or punish them for their criminal behavior. The crimes in question include the previously mentioned crimes in Sarajevo and Srebrenica, as well as separate crimes of murder, inhuman acts, and attacks on civilians related to the shelling of Zagreb in Croatia by the army of the Serbian Kreiner, known as the SVK. Before focusing on General Perisic's individual criminal responsibility, the trial chamber will announce its findings on the crimes perpetrated in Sarajevo, Srebrenica, and Zagreb. <coughs> Commanders, sorry, the trial chamber has found that from September 1992 to November 1995, 
the VRS conducted a lengthy campaign of shelling and sniping in Sarajevo that resulted in the deaths of hundreds of civilians and the wounding of thousands others. The trial chamber examined the facts surrounding nine shelling and ten sniping incidents that occurred in Sarajevo. It found that the VRS had perpetrated the crimes of murder as a crime against humanity, murder as a war crime, inhumane acts as a crime against humanity, and attacks on civilians as a war crime. In the summer of 1995, the VRS invaded the town of Srebrenica, which the United Nations Security Council had previously established as a safe area for civilians. After taking over Srebrenica, the VRS proceeded to forcibly remove and massacre thousands of Muslim civilians and peasants not taking an active part in hostilities. The trial chamber found that the VRS committed the crimes of murder as a crime against humanity, murder as a war crime, inhumane acts as a crime against humanity, persecutions as a crime against humanity, and extermination as a crime against humanity. The trial chamber has determined that the SVK fired rockets on the city of Zagreb on the 2nd of May 1995, killing five people and injuring 46. The SVK again fired rockets on Zagreb on the next day, killing two persons and injuring 54. The chamber found that the SVK perpetrated the crimes of murder as a crime against humanity, murder as a war crime, inhumane acts as a crime against humanity, and attacks on civilians as a war crime. Having found that crimes were committed in Sarajevo, Srebrenica, and Zagreb, I will now summarize the trial chamber's findings on the logistical and personnel assistance that General Perisic allegedly provided to the VRS and SVK in conducting their operations in Bosnia and Croatia. The trial chamber found that General Perisic oversaw the Yugoslav Army's provision of extensive logistical assistance to the VRS and the SVK. Logistical assistance notably included vast quantities of infantry and artillery ammunition, fuel, spare parts, training, and technical assistance. The Yugoslav Army already provided logistical assistance to these armies before General Perisic became its chief in August 93. However, logistical assistance became more centralized, structured, and coordinated during his tenure. General Perisic organized a procurement procedure for the Yugoslav Army General Staff to review requests for logistical assistance. He also regularly met and conferred with General Mladic and General Cerekatic, the VRS and SVK's respective commanders, about the Army's military needs. General Perisic and the Yugoslav Army General Staff did did not grant requests for assistance, although they approved a substantial proportion of them, including millions of infantry bullets and thousands of shells. For instance, in 1994, the VRS main staff estimated that it had obtained from the Yugoslav army over 25 million infantry bullets and over 7,500 shells, among other ammunition. The Supreme Defense Council of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia granted General Perisic and the Yugoslav Army the authority to provide logistical assistance to the VRS and the SVK. Even though General Perisic was not officially a member of the Supreme Defense Council, he participated in the Council's meetings along with its members, notably Slobodan Milosevic and Zoran Lilic, who then respectively held the titles of President of Serbia and President of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. General Perisic regularly urged the Council to continue providing important logistical assistance to the VRS and SVK 
insisting that they could not wage war without significant military support. While the international community had dispatched personnel to monitor the border between Yugoslavia and Bosnia for arms deliveries, Serb authorities were able to evade border monitors. Sanctions by the international community did not preclude the VRS and SVK from regularly receiving considerable quantities of weaponry from Serbia. The trial chamber will now turn to the personnel assistance overseen by General Perisic. A large number of VRS and SVK officers were drawn from the ranks of the Yugoslav army. They officially remained members of the Yugoslav army even as they were fighting in Bosnia and Croatia under the banners of the VRS and the SVK. General Perisic proposed and carefully implemented the idea to create, quote, personnel centers, unquote, to regularize the status of these officers and allow them to lawfully remain part of the Yugoslav army. VRS officers retained their salaries and benefits as Yugoslav army members through what was known as the 30th personnel center and SVK officers through the 40th personnel center. General Perisic further intended the personnel center system to help legalize the deployment of additional personnel to these armies. <coughs> In December of 1993, General Perisic stated there were over 7,000 Yugoslav army officers serving in the VRS and SVK through the personnel centers. While many officers voluntarily accepted transfer, General Perisic made it clear that those who refused to be sent to the VRS or SVK would be dismissed from the Yugoslav army in one way or another. General Perisic And another leading Yugoslav officials, I beg your pardon, I must start that again. General Perisic and other leading Yugoslav officials sought to keep the real function of the personnel center secret in order to avoid further criticism or sanctions from the international community. The trial chamber will now summarize its legal conclusions on the aiding and abetting counts charged under Article 7.1. The following considerations and findings are made by majority, Judge Muloto dissenting. The majority finds that crimes were inextricably linked to the VRS's war strategy and objectives. The VRS regularly made no distinction between civilian mili and, and military targets. In fact, it targeted Bosnian Muslim civilians as a matter of course. The crimes charged in this case were not perpetrated by rogue soldiers acting independently. Rather, they were part of a lengthy campaign overseen by top VRS officers of the Yugoslav armies, on the Yugoslav army's payroll, including General Mladic. General Perisic is not charged with helping the VRS wage war per se, yet under the VRS's strategy, there was no clear distinction between military warfare against Bosnian Muslim troops and attacks against Muslim civilians. General Perisic repeatedly exercised his authority to provide logistical and personnel assistance that made it possible for the VRS to wage a war that he knew encompassed systematic crimes against Muslim civilians. The siege of Sarajevo and the ensuing sniping and shelling of its civilians were means of implementing the Bosnian Serb objective of dividing Sarajevo into Serb and Muslim sectors. Attacks against civilians aimed to intimidate the population of Sarajevo and break its morale and spirit, as well as to destabilize Bosnia and Herzegovina as a country. Another Bosnian Serb objective was the establishment of a corridor in the Drina Valley and the elimination of the Drina River as a border between Serbia and Republika Srpska. 
This objective was pursued through criminal means, as the Bosnian Serb leadership sought to eliminate Muslim enclaves in that area. Once the VRS took over the Srebrenica enclave, it proceeded to forcibly remove and massacre its Muslim population, perpetrating atrocities on a vast scale. The VRS largely depended on logistical and personnel assistance overseen by General Perisic in order to conduct its operations in Sarajevo and Srebrenica. The majority finds that General Perisic's actions had a substantial effect on the crimes the, uh, the VRS perpetrated because its military operations encompassed as systematic crimes against civilians. Besides witness testimony, the majority relied upon numerous sources of information for its conclusions, including material delivery forms, personnel files, internal military reports, communication records, and minutes of the Supreme Defense Council featuring discussions between General Perisic, Slobodan Milosevic, Zoran Lilic, and other top officials. <coughs> As stated earlier, General Perisic oversaw the Yugoslav Army's comprehensive logistical assistance to the VRS. Part of this help was given to VRS units involved in perpetrating the charged crimes. For example, the Drina Corps, the Kraina Corps, the Sarajevo Romania Corps. Overall, logistical assistance from the Yugoslav army was critical to the VRS's operations because its resources were limited, its financial situation was dire, and its ammunition reserves verged on depletion as the war progressed. <coughs> The Bosnian Serb leadership regularly pressed General Perisic to keep sending assistance, as it, as it was well aware that its military operations largely depended, depended on Yugoslav army support. Radovan Karadic admitted, for instance, that, and I quote, nothing would happen without Serbia. We do not have those resources, <coughs> and we would not be able to fight, unquote. Similarly, General Mladic admitted that, quote, we would not be able to live, unquote, if assistance was discontinued. <coughs> General Perisic himself stated on several occasions that the VRS would have faced much greater difficulties in waging war if military assistance had been withheld. Slobodan Milosevic remarked that, quote, Everything that has been made there was made thanks to Serbia and the army, unquote. A statement with which General Perisic concurred. In addition to orchestrating the logistical assistance system, General Perisic assumed a lead role in establishing the 30th Personnel Center to serve the needs of key VRS officers. Besides General Mladic, members of the 30th Personnel Center included high-ranking officers, officers responsible for crimes in Sarajevo and or Srebrenica, namely Stanislav Galic, Dragomir Milosevic, Milenko Ivanovic, Radislav Kerstic, Vojadin Popovic, Vinko Pandurevic, Milan Gvero, Lubisha Biara, Radivoy Miletic, and Dragan Brenovic. These officers continued to receive their salaries as regular Yugoslav army members. Moreover, they retained all their rights and benefits as members, receiving compensation for service under difficult conditions, housing benefits, pension benefits, as well as medical insurance and treatment for themselves and their families. The majority finds that General Perisic aimed to help the VRS retain and recruit qualified officers by providing such rights and benefits as incentives to serve in the VRS. General Perisic was well aware that the payment of salaries was, in his own words, 
of, quote, great help, unquote, to the VRS. Republika Serbska had serious difficulties with remunerating VRS personnel in light of its grave financial problems. Finally, the majority finds that General Perisic had knowledge that the VRS's operations encompassed grave crimes against civilians. General Perisic received inf information from a variety of sources concerning the VRS's criminal behavior and discriminatory intent against Muslims. Under General Perisic's direction, the Yugoslav Army's intelligence and security organs monitored views monitored the views of the international community and international media concerning the conflict in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Yugoslav Army General Staff also received diplomatic reports about proceedings at the United Nations Security Council concerning grave abuses against civilians in Sarajevo and other parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina. In particular, General Perisic was alerted to the fact that the VRS was conducting a campaign of sniping and shelling against civilians during its siege of Sarajevo. These regular attacks were well documented and widely reported for a period of three years. General Perisic could not have reasonably discounted this information simply because he and his allies considered it biased against the Serbs. The fact that information could, in certain instances, be biased or one-sided does not undermine the, f the finding that General Perisic had notice of the VRS's crimes in Sarajevo, namely murder, attacks on civilians and inhumane acts. With regard to the atrocities perpetrated during the takeover of, of Srebrenica in July 1995, the majority underlines that General Perisic had already been notified long before his, this strategy that the VRS had a propensity to target civilians. Further, he was aware of the escalating tensions in the Srebrenica area and that the VRS was preparing a military attack there. The majority is satisfied that General Perisic knew that it was highly probable that the VRS would forcibly transfer Bosnian Muslims and commit killings and other abuses with discriminatory intent once Srebrenica had fallen under VR's control. In other words, General Perisic knew of the likelihood that the VRS would perpetrate the crimes of murder, inhumane acts, and persecutions in Srebrenica. However, the trial chamber unanimous, unanimously finds that the evidence does not establish beyond a reasonable doubt that General Perisic could reasonably have foreseen, based on his knowledge of the VRS's prior conduct, that the VRS would engage in the radical, systematic extermination of thousands of Muslims in Srebrenica. The trial chamber now rendered its findings on the counts charged under Article 7.3 of the statute. The trial chamber recalls that besides aiding and abetting crimes, General Perisic is accused of failing to prevent crimes perpetrated by his subordinates and or punish them for their criminal behavior. In order for, the general, for General Perisic to be culpable under this mode of liability, the trial chamber must consider whether a superior subordinate relationship existed between General Perisic and the perpetrators, including whether he exercised effective control over them. The trial chamber underlines that mere cooperation or the mere ability to exercise influence is not sufficient to establish effective control. Firstly, the chamber finds that the VRS's crimes in Sarajevo and Srebrenica were perpetrated by officers who were de jure subordinated to General Persich, namely officers who were members of the 30th Personnel Center and officially remained part of the Yugoslav army. However, possession of de jure authority in the absence of an inquiry into the de facto state of affairs is generally insufficient to establish effective control under the applicable legal standard, which requires proof of the material ability to prevent or punish 
the criminal behavior of subordinates. The trial record neither contains evidence of command orders by General Perisic to members of the 30th Personnel Center, nor evidence of disciplinary or criminal proceedings initiated by Perisic against them. Rather, the evidence reflects General Perisic's inability to impose binding orders on General Mladic, the VRS commander, who maintained a measure of independence throughout the war. Even though General Perisic had a collaborative relationship with Mladic and substantially aided his operations, the evidence does not establish that he exercised effective control over him or any other Yugoslav army officer serving in the VRS through the 30th Personnel Center. The evidence, does, the evidence does not establish beyond a reasonable doubt that a superior subordinate relationship existed at the relevant time between General Perisic and perpetrators of the crimes committed in Sarajevo and Srebrenica. Accordingly, the trial chamber holds that General Perisic is not criminally responsible for failing to prevent the VRS's crimes or punish their perpetrators. Secondly, General Perisic is charged with failing to punish the perpetrators of the SVK's rocket attacks on Zagreb in May 1995. The trial chamber similarly finds that the lead perpetrators of these crimes were SVK officers who were de jure subordinated to General Perisic because they officially remained part of the Yugoslav army and were members of the 40th Personnel Center. However, unlike against VRS officers, General Perisic initiated pro disciplinary proceedings against officers serving in the SVK through the 40th Personnel Center. The trial chamber, by a majority, Judge Molotto dissenting, finds that General Perisic exercised effective control over Yugoslav army officers serving in the SVK through the 40th Personnel Center. This conclusion is further based on the finding that General Perisic had the ability to issue command orders to senior SVK officers serving in the 40th Personnel Center who considered them binding. The majority therefore finds that a superior subordinate relationship existed at the relevant time between General Perisic and perpetrators of the criminal attacks on Zagreb on the 2nd and 3rd of May 1995. The majority finds that although General Perisic was immediately notified of both of the SVK's rocket attacks on Zagreb, he failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures to punish the perpetrators whose grave crimes were left unsanctioned. The majority thus holds that General Perisic is culpable of failing to punish his subordinates for their crimes in Zagreb. General Perisic, will you please rise for the tribunal's final verdict and sentence? The trial chamber finds you not guilty and therefore acquits you on count 13, extermination as a crime against humanity in relation to Srebrenica. The trial chamber finds by majority, Judge Molotov dissenting, that you are guilty as an aider and abetter under Article 71 of the statute of the following counts. One, count one, murder as a crime against humanity in relation to Sarajevo, murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war in relation to Sarajevo, inhumane acts injuring and wounding civilians as a crime against humanity in relation to Sarajevo, attacks on civilians as a violation of the laws or customs of war in relation to Sarajevo, Count nine, murder as a crime against humanity in relation to Srebrenica. Count ten, murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war in relation to Srebrenica. Count eleven, inhumane acts 
inflicting serious injuries and wounding and forcible transfer as a crime against humanity in relation to Srebrenica, count 12, persecutions on political, racial, or religious grounds as a crime against humanity in relation to Srebrenica. Regarding Article 73 of the statute as a separate mode of liability for counts 1, 2, 3, and 4, and counts 9, 10, 11, and 12, the trial chamber finds that you are not guilty as a superior for failing to prevent crimes by subordinates or punish their perpetrators. The trial chamber finds by majority, Judge Molotov dissenting, that you are guilty as a superior under Article 73 of the statute for failing to punish your subordinates for their, for their crimes on the following counts. Count five, murder as a crime against humanity in relation to Zagreb. Mad, count six, murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war in relation to Zagreb. Count seven, inhumane acts, including injuring and wounding civilians as a crime against humanity in relation to Zagreb. Count eight, attacks on civilians as a violation of the laws or customs of war in relation to Zagreb. In evaluating the proper sentence for these crimes, the majority has considered both aggravating and mitigating circumstances outlined in the official judgment. In particular, the majority emphasizes that the VRS's crimes lasted over a long period of time and that the victims were numerous and particularly vulnerable. The majority further underlines that you kept providing assistance to the VRS for months after being informed of the VRS's enormous massacre in Srebrenica. For these crimes, the majority sentences you, Momchilo Perisic, to a single term of 27 years in prison. You are entitled to credit for the time period you have been in custody which amounts to 1,078 days, you may be seated. This concludes the delivery of the judgment, which will now be made available to the public, and this marks the end of the trial. Court adjourned. All rise.